podium and talk? How easy is it to talk about Islam to your cousin? Or your uncle who laughs at you every time you bring it up? Or your cousins or your, your friends, your extended family who make fun of your beard or your hijab? Or the fact that you pray five times, oh my God, the Shaykh is here. The Mullah is here. How hard is it to talk to them? It's not easy. And a lot of times in our homes what happens is, especially among our youth, they get heat from home and they, you know, religious youth, they get heat from home, they get yelled at, they get, you know, all kinds of scolding from home. And when they, la they can't take it, they go outside and hang out in the masjid and hang out with the brothers and, you know, this is their escape. Where's shahada ala nas? Who are you supposed to direct your da'wah and your concern to? Who are the first people you are to save from the hellfire? Who anfusakum wa ahlikum? Save yourselves and your families. It's the hardest part. This is where the Messenger والسلام, began. He began with his family Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Wallahi it's difficult. It's very very difficult to give da'wah to your own family because they, they, they dismiss what you have to say the most easily. You know, you could be a big shot everywhere else. When you come home you're just, you know, you're little Abdullah, you're no one. Right, you're, ta you're telling me, imagine Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam is telling his father, right? He's telling his father, this is just a tamathil, these are just idols and representations, it has no basis. Antum laha akifun. Right? This is, this is all wrong. A knowledge has come to me that hasn't come to you. He's talking to his father, what's the dad gonna say? You try to, you know, your kid comes up to you and tells you how to file your taxes, what are you gonna say? Go play with Legos. Go, leave me alone. You're in no position to tell me how to live. You're my kid after all. Ibrahim alayhi salam has to talk to his father. It's difficult. It's a difficult thing to do. So when we talk about shahada ala nas, number one, at home within our families. We have to learn to be patient with our families. We have to learn, it's not just about telling them, you're going to go to hell if you do this. Or if you don't do that, you're going to be punishable with Allah. That's not enough. We have to be patient with them and deal with them like human beings. Many of us who turn to the religion of Allah and take it, some of us in this community, we take Islam more seriously now than we did a few years ago. Maybe we weren't that serious, but then we started changing a little bit and now we're, we take it a lot more seriously. But it didn't happen overnight. And it wasn't some button that was pressed and all of a sudden you became like a Sahabi and a Tabi'i. It didn't happen like that. So don't expect that from other people. Don't expect that people will just hear your words and immediately they will respond. Wallahi, listen to this. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's not going to be a better speaker. They will not be a better speaker. And the words that he, are say, he is saying, they're not going to be better words. They're not going to be. And when you talk about the character and the personality and the example, there's not going to be a better example. So when he gives da'wah to people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best person, the best behavior, the best words, the best speech, the best message, all, all of the best. But people still listened or no? Most people still didn't listen. So don't expect that your two words, man, why don't they listen? They never listened to me. What a shock. People didn't listen to the Messenger of Allah, his own uncles. His own uncles were enemies against him. His own tribe was enemy against him. Why? This is the work of da'wah. Nuh alayhi salam, an eloquent messenger of Allah. You read his words in the Quran, they're beautiful. They're remarkably beautiful words. And yet these words have no effect on these people. You and I read them and we're mesmerized by how incredibly eloquent this man is. Alayhi salam. And yet his people for centuries are just making him an object of ridicule. So don't think just because you share some words that you should expect results. And this should not frustrate you to stop giving advice and counsel. A lot of, just some practical advice again. A lot of times in your circle of friends or cousins or family, you give them advice, but they will not accept it only because they don't want you to know that you had the upper hand. Because if they accept that advice and they start making salah or they stop doing that thing that they were doing, they'll feel like, they don't want you to get the feeling that you won. So it's an ego battle. So maybe once you leave, and you go away, then they'll take your advice more seriously. Because they, they don't want to do it in front of you. So don't look for the results. You just do your part. This is such an enormous task and so difficult to work without seeing results that Allah counsels His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Remind, you are nothing more than just a means to deliver a reminder. Just keep doing that. Just keep doing that. Don't look for anything else. Just keep doing this part. And changing the hearts, this is in Allah's hands. We don't do that. Your words do not change anyone. Your advice, your counsel, your speech, your practice, it doesn't change anyone. These are just your efforts. The change comes from Allah Azza wa the barakah He puts inside the heart of the person. That's why we call Him Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, or the changer and the alternator of hearts. He changes the hearts of the people. 
Now, I want to share with you, inshallah ta'ala, another example. This, not from the home, from the point of view of the masajid. And may Allah Azza wa make all of the masajid in this country and all over the world a place where people can come for Islam, not a place where people are pushed away from Islam. But you know, you have people, I met this brother who wants to be, some of the younger guys here know, he wants to be an MMA fighter. This is, you know, uh, Irish, uh, Irish fellow, lives in Chicago, you know, he's got like bulky build, tattoos all over his body, working out like six, seven hours a day, training to fight, you know, those mixed martial arts tournaments. You know, heavy set guy, tattoos and rings like in places you wouldn't put a ring, right? All the kind of guy you would not expect at a masjid, right? And he shows up at the masjid. He wants to know about Islam. And he looks like, you know, three rings over here, one over here, tattoos all over his face. You know, you know, he walks into the masjid, what's the reaction that people give him? Oh my God, I didn't know the Jal was coming this early, right? <laughs> people, are, people are going crazy. Astaghfirullah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, a'udhu billahi bin shaytan al-rajeem. Somebody tell this guy this is against, you know, Islam, etc, etc. This is haram, you can't do this, etc. The guy has no idea, all he's looking for is the truth. All he's looking, and where is he supposed to go? Where is he supposed to go? There was an incident not too long ago where a, a Muslim brother who was drunk, he was drunk, he came into the masjid at Taraweeh time in Ramadan. He came into the masjid at Taraweeh time. And he got kicked out. He got kicked out, right? Now tell me, if he's drunk, we already know he's got a problem. That's clear. And you expect he would go to the bar. The fact that he came to the masjid, doesn't that tell you something? Doesn't that tell you he's trying to change? He's looking for help? But we don't treat these people like human beings. We have these ideals in our head of what this deen should be. We ourselves don't fulfill them, but we impose them on others and judge others by them. Subhanallah. We, are, we have become a judgmental people. To the point where somebody walks into the masjid and you look at him up and down and say, man, I could tell what deviation he comes from. You know, what his problem is going to be. What his, you know, his confusions are. Or how not serious about the religion he is. Stop judging people. This is not a right that Allah Azza wa Jal gave us. And you see, my teacher used to give a, a, just a really remarkable example about people. When you're walking by and you see a pebble on the, you know, a rock, just covered in dirt. You just pass by it, you say, it's a filthy rock, what do I have to do with it? And somebody else passes by that same rock and scrapes it a little. Takes a little time on it and scrapes it and finds a diamond inside. This is what people are. It's rough on the outside, right? You don't know what's on the inside. You, you're not going to know what's on the inside. So don't pass judgment on people just based on their behavior and how their speech is. You know, a lot of places in our community, in, in masajid all over the country, you know, masjids have basketball courts, which is a pretty good investment for a masjid. Because all these youth, they start coming to play ball, right? And some of these guys, they've never been to a masjid. They're just from, you know, Muslim kids, but they're from the local high school, local community, they're part of a gang, they've got really bad language, right? They've got vocabulary, filthy vocabulary that the elders of our community don't even know exists, right? And they come to the ball court at the masjid, and they're cursing, and they're going wild, and they're playing ball, just like they would at any park. And anybody would see that and get disturbed, man, these people, get them out of here. This is not the place for that kind of thing. But you know what? If you kick them out of there, if that's the approach, you kick them out of there, where are they going to go? They're going to go to the club. They're going to go do some drugs. They're going to go join another gang. Or go play in a ballpark with other non-Muslims and do other non-Muslim kinds of things. The fact that they're here, at least they might hear the Adhan. Maybe some advice will go into their ears. Maybe somebody will deal with them patiently and give them the message of Islam with hilm, with forbearance, with patience, with tolerance, with thick skin. Because that's really what it's about. In the end, our, our deen is nothing more than an act of mercy for humanity. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, for example, in Surah uh, Al-Balad, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرُ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْمَرْحَمَةِ Right? They, they enjoined upon each other perseverance, patience, and they enjoined upon each other this idea of mutually and universally shared mercy. It's not just that you have to tell people about Islam, you have to be concerned about people. When you're concerned about people, you learn to work with them and deal with them and you're patient with them. And this is something that is the concern of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Constantly worried about people. Constantly worried. You and I, when, you talk to some, when, when we talk to someone, they don't listen to us, we say, forget you man, who needs you? We do that, we have that attitude. Man, that guy didn't even listen to me. Or you know what he said to me? He insulted me. I'm never going to even look at his direction. If I pass by him, I'll avoid eye contact. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is insulted to his face day after day after day. 
And yet he goes back to the same people, full of concern for them to give them da'wah, to give them this Islam. To the point where Allah has to tell him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ أَثَارِهِمْ Are you going to kill yourself over grief? You're going to stress yourself out over grief. If they don't believe, it, you know, if they don't believe in this, this incredible speech, this advice that Allah Azza wa has sent. This is a profoundly important lesson that all of us have to learn. Starting with our families and extending into our masajid. The youth here especially, inshaAllah ta'ala, please listen. A lot of you, a lot of you have come from a background where you were in ignorance. And Allah put something in your hearts where you are at least trying to learn something about the religion. Many of you. Many of you haven't made that change yet and may Allah make that change happen for you. But many of you started to learn something about the religion. You came in the company of some scholars or you start started taking advantage of some halaqat and programs and activities. But as soon as you started doing that, you started looking down and you started cutting yourself off from the vast majority of the other Muslim youth that are in the rut that you used to be in. You no longer talk to them because you have nothing in common with them. You can't, you can't speak their language anymore because you've become this sort of different creature that they can't relate with. And this is a serious problem and this is what I want to conclude with inshaAllah ta'ala. People like myself and people far more qualified than myself that give khutbahs and talks and lectures and they give classes and halaqat, they only have a certain small audience. Even this gathering in our Jumu'ah today is a certain small audience. There are people that you know, Muslims mostly and non-Muslims also, that are not here. That need to listen to a good message but they're not here. And I and other ulama, they cannot reach them. Guess who can reach them? Only you. Allah made you an ambassador of Islam to them. Maybe there are some members in your family that you would never, they would only end up at a masjid if they got lost or something. By accident they would end up here. By accident they might listen to some speech or some lecture or some recitation of the Qur'an and by accident they might turn the mp3s of the, the music and the movies off from their iPod. By accident. Normally they would not. Who is going to get this deen out to them? Who is going to bear witness against them? This is our responsibility. This is a concern you and I have to share. And this is really what sets this ummah apart.